Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas. Now let's be honest, we're starting to see a lot of different AI developer tools coming out left and right, whether you're seeing them in YouTube, LinkedIn, or in Twitter. And they're basically tools where they have a prompt, you can write down something in the prompt, and then on the left side, you have the chat, on the right side, you have the you know front end design, and then you can integrate it to, to GitHub, you have a specific database. But in today's video, what I want to do is I want to share with you a new AI developer tool that is pretty much very similar to Lovable or Bolt, but it has two very unique things that I'm going to show you in this video that I think make this tool very valuable for first time users or for non technical people to actually launch their project. Now, before we dive into the video, I would love to invite you guys to my Discord community, my free Discord community. We are a bunch of different startup founders, designers, developers that get together every single weekday to talk about different topics via Google Meet. So, you know, you can meet me, you can meet the other people in my community. And if you're interested in that, link is down in the description below. But anyways, this tool is called dualite.dev, right? It says meet Dualite, your full stack AI builder. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can see the showcase of different items. We have SaaS, we have games, we have productivity, we have websites, we have clones of big apps like Instagram, for example. And apart from just viewing the prototype, you can also remix the, the project. And once you sign in, you get a view like this, where it says dual light every week, the, the background changes, which is pretty nice. And something that really sets dual light, you know, from different other types of AI builders is that you can choose the framework and the language of what you're what you're going to build. And not only that, you can, you know, import an image, import a Figma design, import code. We have Superbase over here and then we have this which is pretty cool. And this is basically like the project rules. Define project rules before starting a chat. These rules will be temporarily stored and applied once you start a chat. So, you know, you can create you can basically add your prompt and then apply some rules to your prompt. Now, for example, let's say that we want to build that Instagram clone from scratch. What we can do is we can write, you know, a prompt. We can say something like build me a basic Instagram clone, integrate login and sign up through Superbase. Also give users the ability to upload pictures and see it in their own profile section. So I can ask ChatGPT to basically help me with some rules. So I basically took a screenshot of this and I said, you know, I'm building this. Um, and I want you to help me with some rules, see attached image, right? And I also asked ChatGPT to make the rules design focused. So we can start, you know, looking at some of these things and maybe take them into account. So for example, this one would be a good thing to keep in mind. You can paste this over here. These UX principles seem pretty interesting, right? Keep all actions one to two tips, taps away. So let's just copy all of these actually. And I like this consistency as well. So, and I like this out of scope as well. So let's just go and, you know, paste all of these things in here. So let's just remove this title and then we can say save rules. And what we can also do is we can, you know, connect our Superbase account. We're going to want to authorize our API access for, for this app. And then we can just select the project. And so I think all of these steps are very important to kind of do in the very beginning. And what's also great here is that you can attach API specifications. So if you're trying to do something specific with the API that you want to integrate in this app, you can specify that here. In this case, we don't really want to do that. I think that this is enough for now. So let's go ahead and also frameworks and language. I think we can leave it like, like it is right now. So let's go ahead and submit this. All right. So once we're in, we have the chat on the right side, we have the code on the left. So you have a big, pile of different folders here on the left. You can already start seeing that the super base has been integrated down here. We have our terminal and we can go up here to the preview and we can see, all right, Instagram sign into your account. So I don't have an account, so let's sign up. So I'm just going to sign up like this and also just checking my email. I can see that I get a email or a sign up confirmation. So we can just click on that link and the authentication is now successful. So let's go ahead and sign in. I'm just going to click on sign in and boom, we are signed in. So we have our different tabs over here. I can select a photo. I have my profile tab, which seems empty and already on the get go. Everything seems to work with this database with authentication, which is just awesome. So we can go ahead and tap to select a photo and I'm just going to choose one of my YouTube video uh, thumbnails and we're going to call, we're going to say we YouTube in. 
right? We YouTube in and share the post. And there we go, boom, I already have my first post. And if I go to my profile, it is over here. Awesome. All right, lovely. Now, so what would be the next step? Well, the next step here would be, I would want to maybe like the post right now. I can't do that. I would maybe want to comment on the post. Um, I would probably want to change my profile picture. So let's just do one of these things. Let's just go step by step. I always think that whenever you use tools like this or whenever you're coding, it's always best to just go step by step, right? So we can say, give the user the ability to like a post, click on enter. And something that I forgot to mention is that, as you can see, it's pretty much like a mobile view of it. And that's because we stated in our rules that the site must be mobile first. All right, so now that's done, we can go ahead and see what it did. And it says likes features now live. So and before that we get, let's go to my prompt, right? Give the user the ability to like a post. So it shows the reasoning, we can show the reasoning and you can see kind of the thought process behind the AI tool, right? The, US, the user wants to add the ability to like posts. There's already a data, database schema with profiles and post tables. So the first thing that it did was actually look at Superbase and see the structure of the database. And then it identified the problem. There's a postcard component that shows a heart icon for likes, but it's not functional yet. So it added a likes table to the database it updated the component, it added the count display, and it made the heart button, button functional with proper state management. And again, it followed the rules which we gave it at the beginning. So you can already start seeing how organized and how smart this, this uh, AI system is. So now if I go over here to the left where we get our, you know, our view over here, I can click on this and this turns red just like in Instagram and it has a very nice little animation, very clean animation, and we get our counter down here, one like. All right, so that's great. Let's go ahead and now give the user the ability to update their profile image. So now it seems to work, but now we get this little error, bucket not found. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, try to debug this with the English language here in the chat. Go ahead and click enter. All right, and now it works. As you can see, this is like one of my AI images uh, with the two buttons over here. Um, but it works. There's myself and I have my profile image set and I guess, do I have to save it somehow? Maybe I do. So yeah, that seems to be like the next step that we have to kind of debug. Once the user uploads the image, they have to save it, right? So we can say once the user uploads the image, there should be a save confirmation button to actually save and store the profile image. So let's go ahead and, and send that in. All right. So now if I try again, upload that image, New profile picture selected, tap the green check mark to save. Perfect. And it keeps that same type of design system, which looks great. Now the next step here is to actually bring this app into my own URL outside of Dualite Dev. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go and click on publish and we're gonna connect it to Netlify. So inside of Netlify, we're just gonna log in with our account and we're gonna authorize this. And then we get a message, are you sure you want to deploy your site to Netlify? Let's go ahead, let's do it, go live. And as you can see, it starts to do it for you, right? It created the site now, it's going to build and eventually it's gonna deploy. And you have these deployment logs down here to kind of give you like a status update of what it's doing. And now it's deployed in its own URL over here. It has like a Netlify app URL. But basically, if you are, if you know about Netlify, you know that there you can basically open that project and connect the custom domain, whether it be from GoDaddy or Namecheap, you can just connect that domain and basically connect those A records and C name records, those DNS settings inside of your domain provider. So I'm just gonna pretend to sign in over here. And as you can see, it's there, it's me, it's all updated, which looks great. And going back in here, we can go ahead and see, we, can, we have these different options up here as well. We have the GitHub authentication so we can connect this with GitHub and we can download the whole code base as a zip file. Now you also have like an unlimited chat amount here, which is something that's very unique to this specific app. But what I find extremely valuable from this, and this is something that the other AI development tools lack, and that's this personal approach, because a lot of these people or a lot of people that use these tools right? They are people that come from a non-technical background. They're maybe designers. Uh, they're maybe, you know, project managers. There are people in different industries, like, I don't know, dentists, 
people in finance, lawyers, anything, right? They come to these AI tools to build something, but they lack the skills of like backend development and, you know, making things work, right? A lot of things break. And that's where a lot of these AI tools have a problem with. Not only that, but also like security wise. But what's great about Duolite is that you can go up here and we have this chat with Duolite expert. And you basically have the ability to actually book a call with them and go through your problems. And you have a team of engineers behind that to help you with your problems, whether it be publishing your project, whether it be something with the back end, whether it be something with API integration. So this is kind of extremely valuable. But anyways, guys, that's Duolite, dualite.dev. Check it out. Link is down in the description below. And if you have any other questions, any comments about this tool, please feel free to write down in the comments below. Join my Discord to talk to me and to talk to the others in my community. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the whole workflow here. And hope to see you next time. All right. Thank you so much. Goodbye.